If you are looking to test for STIs in the comfort of your own home, look no further than FAMCA. Our test kits provide you with results in 15 minutes. Go to www.famca.co.za for safe, fast and discreet at-home STI test kits. Jean-Marie van Graan, also known as Lola Blakely, and I'm thrilled to introduce to you Lotus Love, your ultimate destination in relationship, intimacy, and wellness coaching. As a wellness relationship and intimacy associated counselor, I'm passionate about helping individuals and couples navigate the complexities of modern relationships. Through personalized coaching sessions, I empower my clients to embrace love, intimacy, and connections in all its forms. Whether you're exploring ethical non-monogamy, navigating post-divorce life, or preparing for the dating scene, I'm here to support you. My coaching approach is holistic, compassionate, and tailored to your unique needs and goals. Together, we'll uncover your strengths, address the challenges, and create a path towards a more fulfilling and meaningful life. Ready to embark on a journey of self-discovery and transformation? Book a consultation with me today and let Lotus Love be your guide to fulfillment in relationship and life. Your path to a happier, healthier, more fulfilling life and relationship can start with me here today.
you are looking to test for STIs in the comfort of your own home, look no further than FAMCA. Our test kits provide you with results in 15 minutes. Go to www.famca.co.za for safe, fast and discreet at-home STI test kits. Opinions expressed in this program are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views or positions of any entities they represent or that of the program, its presenters, hosts, directors or other team members. This show is intended for audiences aged 23 and older. This production and its digital copies contain content of an adult nature. If you are easily offended or are under the age of 18, this show is not intended for you. The posts, pages and recordings within are intended for adults only and may include descriptions of scenes of sexual content, suggestive opinions, detailed discussions and graphic topics. Listener discretion is advised. Passionate pollies and sultry swingers, it's time for Lola's Lifestyle Lectures on your favorite seduction station, Lust FM, for the lustful listeners. Good evening, lustfuls, and welcome to what the hell is going on here? And let's not do that. Welcome to the fourth episode in season two of Lola's Lifestyle Lectures, your favorite nighttime talk focused on education and guidance and ethical non-monogamy and swinging. 
I'd like to start off by, as usual, mentioning our association endorsement site, Zenites. The Zenites website has combined socials, events, parties, and workshops for all works, walks of life and like minded individuals. Zenites is a quality South African community of fun, unique, uninhibited people who enjoy life to the fullest, who are into casual dating, social networking, open relationships and alternative lifestyles. With an extensive amount of social platforms for adults to connect on, Zenites makes finding quality connections easy, affordable and accessible. If you'd like to join the Zenites community, head on over to www.znites.com and explore countless possibilities let me just there we go um then of course our endorsement site the cof lola's favorite friends at the council of fantasy the council of fantasy is a lifestyle oriented community catering for everything from bdsm to lifestyle sex positivity body positivity mind positivity man this is a positive bunch of people yes we're all inclusive and the only shame we shame is shame itself shame on you you shamers one of the main focuses of us at the cof is education and not just in bdsm but in sex positivity and lifestyle as well you guys can find us at www.counciloffantasy.co.za alternatively visit lola's website at www.lelustfm.live find the link to the whatsapp community right at the bottom of the home screen there's a whatsapp icon click on that icon and then come and visit us on the cof whatsapp community your Lola Blakely production moderators for this evening are a warm welcome to our new moderator, Miss Muffet. Yay! Hello, Miss Muffet. Thank you for joining us. And of course, my man Axel. Then, of course, the whip cracking Miss Medusa, our production manager, is also on air tonight. So, if you guys see them in the chat, say hi. The yacht engage with our listeners. Keep us safe during the airing. Feel free to ask them questions or send them a wave. Now, I've got to un un unmute this mic's man. Oh, this my man's mic. Mr. Tusum, you muted. There we go. <laughs> my guys, this evening. Yes, I can. My co-host this Hallelujah. evening is half of the fabulous duo, um, Tusum for Fun, Mr. James. Hello, it's always Lara. great having you with us. I mean, you just finished work, like, just now. Just now, yeah. Like, I'm literally like, no, just no. <laughs> and, and you still make it onto the show. Like, you're an incredible oh. human being. Thank you for Please that. Anything. It's a pleasure. Oh, how was your week, James? Uh, hectic. Hectic. Really hectic. I mean, can we swap roles for? Can we swap roles for a minute? You come do no. my work, I come do yours. Are you more hectic than me? No, I don't. It isn't. <laughs> I want to give you a break. You see, I'm nice like that. <laughs> you are way too nice. No, but it's good. It's, and keep, if, it's, it's keeping my feet on the ground, and it's uh, keeping me out of trouble. Keeping me out of trouble. That's good. And of course, you had pizza for dinner. That's always a I win, right? Indeed. That's, and Miss Tusa made that's, pizza. She did. It's always a win to a to a hump day if you get home and there's pizza waiting for you. Can you ask her to make me pizza too? You know I love a pizza. Uh, there's some leftovers. You're more than welcome really? to come over and, and share. Yeah? Listen, I'll be there after the show. I haven't eaten. <laughs> just just bring some champagne with you, please. <laughs> You know that's my drink. You know me too well. <laughs> so, James, tonight we're talking about sign symbols and secrets of swingers. Also, did you realize the production the production team somewhere, okay, misspelled symbols? They yeah, spelled it with an I I instead of a Y. <laughs> symbols. Symbols. It must I, have been somebody. They're as busy as you are, and they that slipped <laughs> The, the I'm not cuts. saying I typed it. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. <laughs> Folk. I think everybody and knows of course, what you mean. <laughs> well, why, why are you saying what you mean? It wasn't me. What was meant. <laughs> Folk all accountability on the show tonight. I'm just saying. <laughs> Um, and, you know, we've got the multi-talented Dr. M as our guest for tonight, who's mm -hmm. going to help us understand what all okay. of these signs, symbols, 
and secrets means. And I thought, of course, you and I are going to talk a little bit about, about the terminology. But let's let the listeners know who Dr. M is. Dr. Marina Basson obtained her PhD from NWU, uh, NWU in sociology. Dr. M did her master's in medical sociology with a clinical in group dynamics and her bachelor's in forensic psychology. Folk. That's already a mouthful. These are just a couple of Dr. M's qualifications. Dr. M's PhD was done on swinging, well not on swinging, on ethical non-monogamy, and the effects of consensual non-monogamy on the marital well-being and satisfaction among South African couples. In conjunction to being an intimacy coach, Dr. M is also a Reiki master and a life coach. Dr. M is currently employed by UJ as a research associate. She's director of Inspired Intimacy and is launching a comprehensive intimacy coaching syllabus in the next couple of weeks, which is approved by, by the ASCHP, that's the Association for Supportive Counselors and Holistic Practitioners, in the following designations. You guys can go and do an associate wellness intimacy coach program, a wellness intimacy coach, and a specialist wellness intimacy coach. Without further ado, I'd love to welcome my dear friend, Dr. M. Basson. Good evening, Dr. M. You're still muted on the podcast, by the way. Hi, Dr. M. Just click. <laughs> so all you're going to do is click on the podcast, check on the on the screen itself. At the bottom, there's like a little speaker. You just click on that speaker. Good. There we go. No, you're gone again. We come back. Click it again. I'm back. There. You're back. There we go. Good, <laughs> good, good, good. <laughs> Oh, good evening, Lola. Good evening, James. And good evening to all the good listeners. Evening, Dr. M. Thank you for having me back. Um, James, you need to mute your video. There we go. Well, James is muting his video. How was your week, Dr. M? Did you have a good week? It's busy. That's all I can say. It's busy. <laughs> oh, no, you're keeping me busy too. <laughs> oh. Somewhere there's a screaming in the background. I have no idea Can you guys hear that? Yes. Yeah, coming through, coming through very strong on my side. Okay, it's gone now. James, your video is still not muted. So just the video, don't, don't worry about the podcast. Okay. So let's go on while James is muting his video. Dr. M, um, you here this evening to to talk to us talk to us about the signs, symbols, and um, secrets of swingers. And I know because because you find me a little bit earlier, you you did you did extensive research on this. Now I'm going to start with the most obvious one. Um, everybody always uses the bloody upside down pineapple, right? What does this symbolize? Where does it actually come from? So the pineapple, the pineapple comes from way, way before when people used to actually put the pineapple upside down in their trolleys or their shopping mm. carts. That's actually mm. where the upside down comes from. But for the most part, it just represents individuals that are either having a party or that are looking to have a party and remember none of these symbols are universal everything is oh, subjective. really they're not universal they are subjective different folks different strokes but some mm. are more common than others and the pineapple is one of them and um, they also could wear it on their clothing or something like that to indicate that they are swingers or of course on your porch or underneath your mailbox party in the loom but i really does is that a thing but obviously not so much in south africa right because i mean yeah crime rate is right is high right james <laughs> they'll steal it they'll eat it <laughs> and and also they didn't think it through i mean the upside down pineapple they they didn't realize that there's no emoji yet for an upside down pineapple so <laughs> I mean, there's a skew pineapple. <laughs> exactly. What do you think that symbolizes? <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. So, also, I went on. Yeah. Hmm? 
Can I went online and I also looked at a couple, at a couple, right? Because mm -hmm. this is what I do. This is what I love doing. I think I should also become a research associate, like Dr. <laughs> um, I, so, yeah, in South Africa, there's not a lot of flamingos when it comes to, there's not a lot of indication on flamingos when it comes to swingers. But I've realized in America, that's quite big. So we do have quite a large American uh, listenership. So I wanted to touch on that one as well. Well, it's at the flamenco, the bird, is used as mm. a metaphor for the flamenco dance, which is full of passion and fire and um, playfulness. And that generally is an indication um, that people are open to experimentation and open to alternative love lifestyles. That's where mm. that comes from. That's very interesting. Yeah, it's a metaphor, the bird, the flamenco, mm. the to fall for the dance, the flamenco, you know, with all that sultry movement and hip swaying, short skirts, sexy legs, that thing. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Um, and it also symbolizes adventure in relationships. But if you think about the dance, it makes sense that the bird would be a metaphor for that because the dance itself is passionate. It's full of fire. It's it's full of this incredible sexual energy. Ooh, fancy. But I mean, that that sounds like the, the tango dance as well. I mean, the symbol for that could have been a, a pair of tango panties. I mean, that would have been more apt for the swingers. <laughs> tango panties. <laughs> I'm sure somewhere along the line, you would probably find a pair of panties being a symbol for a certain group. Remember, all these symbols <laughs> are subjective so everybody has their own style or their yeah. own ideas about symbols it's not universal mm. I mean, you don't have a universal symbol except maybe the black ring with the swing um the black ring on the men's right hand if i'm not mistaken with the swing it, it almost looks like a sort of a funky half square Mm, um, they use that in a in a round circle as well as as the metaphor or as and, a sign for the swingers. Yes. Yes, and on their um, necklaces, the charms on their necklaces and on their bracelets as well. Yeah, mm. so that tends to be a little bit more common as with a pineapple than other symbols and signs. Mm. Are there any ones I that saw... you, that you found are unique to South Africa, Doctor? There was there's a necklace. I just wish I could find that article again one of my profs was at a cape town based seminar and there seems to be a necklace almost like a choker which is prevalent in south africa i somehow okay. lost that article um there was something about the pendant or the sign on the pendant of the necklace that is uh prevalent for south africa interesting I also thought it was interesting because he taught me something. I thought I knew everything, and here he comes and just talking on air, right? No, you don't. Hello? Oh, sorry, Doctor M. We we lost you there for a second. Can you just repeat that? Uh, how far did you hear? Um, we just heard about your prof, and then he was on a seminar in Cape Town. So there is a symbol. Uh, a jewelry that is unique to South Africa. It's a necklace with a pendant. I don't have the mm. article. I wish I could find it again. There is a specific sign that is very popular in South Africa amongst the swingers. And that came out in research that was uh, brought about in Cape Town. Oh, really? Swingers. I know. I didn't even know they were going to the linking um, seminar. I would have loved to even just listen in on it. I and mean, can you imagine how smart Yes. I mean, why aren't we invited to these things? I think we should have a word with the MEC. <laughs> <laughs> You're damn straight. <laughs> <laughs> so whilst we're talking and while we're talking, especially on um, on the jewellery, uh, there's a page that I follow on my Twitter, right? And it's specifically lifestyle jewellery, which I find very, very interesting. Look, it's an American-based company. It's a U.S.-based company. But um, the the jewelry that they make is specific. Like, you know, you get the hot wife um, heart, the little heart for the hot wife. 
and you get yeah. the the little circle with a swing in the middle. They make those, and then there's also apparently a sign for a, for a stag, which I never knew that there was a sign for a stag. And so they make all of these very very unique. They also do the upside down pineapple, and they make like a little flamingo, and they make um. I can't remember all of them, but I'll try to look for it now, and I can't find it. But when I when I find it on Twitter, I'll just research it or retweet it. And the Triscal, they should be making the Triscal, the three circles, because that's also quite – I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. The three mm. circles, the intertwined circles, that also seems to be a popular – Is that not to indicate poly, though? No, it's non-monogamous across the board, non-monogamous. Across the board. Okay. Yeah. Um, what else have you got there for us, Miss Doctor M? It it symbolizes unity and harmony among swingers, the Triskel, and I hope I'm oh. pronouncing it correctly. So but something in my research that I found, and again, it just uh, the listeners must understand that it's subjective. They may agree or disagree depending on their own preferences. Did you know that an oval shaped pendant on a necklace? in gold or silver can symbolize swinging or interest really? in non-monogamy mm. yeah i also thought hmm because i often wear pendants when i dance and they're oval yeah. and now i'm thinking well this might be a bit of a problem isn't it You're um, giving off the wrong yeah. signals there Yes. <laughs> can you imagine dancing for corporates and the next minute you have some unsolicited attention <laughs> happening oh. <laughs> Well, it's the same as the, the, the ladies that wear anklets, the ankle bracelets. I mean, that's also become accepted as a hot wife anklet, which I think predates, in terms of fashion, predates swinging. So there's a lot of, um, mm. there's a lot of people that, a lot of ladies that wear anklets and don't realize that there's, to some demographics, a connotation, you know, as to what that anklet could mean. Yes, and that's problematic because anklets are more, Absolutely. especially if they wear the gold anklet. <laughs> so I wear anklet, and particularly when I dance as well, and it's always prevalent on my left foot because I'm left, I'm mm -hmm. left dominant. And um, when I heard that it's hot wife, I nearly had a hot fit. Because <laughs> like, <laughs> well, it wasn't a hot flash. No, that's so, Lola. <laughs> Can you imagine, you know, and maybe that's why the lifestyle needs to be very, um, not secretive, but we have to be very careful how we approach people. I won't be impressed if mm. someone comes up to me and says, well, I see you wearing an anklet on your left leg. <laughs> an ankle, so um, you are you like a hot wife? Holy caboli, I will do something to them that's not polite. Seriously. So, and again, it's, it's how does one differentiate? Because nowhere mm. in my research can I find how you differentiate. How is it a clear indication that this person is consensually non-monogamous? See, I think the thing is as well that we need to realize is there's, there's a whole world of people out there. Okay, society isn't just the circle around you. Society aren't just going to be your swingers' friends. Okay, a society, and this is why shows like this is so important because we got to educate society. <laughs> Guys, don't be approaching just everybody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, so society is, is uh, I mean, it's vast. So if I want to wear a bloody anklet, and I also wear an anklet. If I want to wear an ankle bracelet, I love it because it looks pretty and Lola's all about the bling. So let me wear my bland, damn bracelets and don't be off my anklet and don't be coming at me and asking me if, if, if I'm a hot wife. It's fucking rude. <laughs> Do your homework first. <laughs> <laughs> don't stalk me on social media. I love so the V sign, now that I saw it on the video, the, the V sign, that also apparently is an indication that you're open to consensual non-monogamy. <coughs> so I'm just wondering, do you gonna kind of go into a restaurant? And again, it's subjective. Do, do people go into restaurants and I kind of put the V on their cheek like this and sort of sit and then hope that <laughs> <laughs> Like what? And for me, it comes from the hippie days. So I associate this with victory. You know, it's like hippie and um, the 60s, you know, all those. It's like a peace sign. Era. 
Yes, and now now we better not be doing this, and you better not be doing it out your window to bad drivers either, because they may. I know, because that's how I know it. So so when when it's open handed, it's supposed to be peace, right? But if you flip it around, then that's flipping the bird. So, so when it, I didn't know the V, James, did you know the V has to do with with symbols? I, 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 because I like the only V it. I think of, like. <laughs> that's a different symbol altogether, Layla. That's like when you stick your tongue in between you. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I've, yeah. see, I've seen it before where there's a V um, written in text, uh, like on Twitter and, and social media, where there's a V, but enclosed mm -hmm. on the left and right hand side by brackets. That, that's also oh, okay. an international symbol. The, the origins of it, I'm not. I'm not that's sure also very that. interesting. Yeah, it says that the, the V shape is used as a discrete gesture to indicate interest. That's why I'm asking if we sit like this in a restaurant, are we now just letting people know, listen, I'm discreetly, not so discreetly because it's like straight in your face, I'm discreetly, you know, interested. I can't, and, and it, again, it freaks me out because we're going to end up sitting like robots. We're actually going to have to wear masks or something. Um, just so that we don't give off the wrong signal to the wrong people, because it's so <laughs> can you imagine? I mean, how? No, but Lola's gonna Lola's gonna have the V open and her tongue licking in between the V. I don't think she's gonna be sending mixed signals. That's a clear. Listen, my wifeies are on air this evening. They're gonna murder me. <laughs> No, I won't be doing it. So, so you're talking about like sitting at the restaurant with your with your two fingers on your on your cheek in a V form, and just kind of resting your hand on the rest of your fingers, and just kind of sitting very chalantly. I'm not going to say nonchalant because it doesn't look very nonchalant. <laughs> Also, can we just, what, what I'm concerned about, right, is there's so many different symbols mm. that I'm going, can we pick one and stick to it? No, but we need to discuss them all so everyone can pick their own symbol and stick to No, but to why? It. This is the problem, though, because there's so many, and then it, it becomes kind of like it, it waters down, don't you feel? Well, well that's, that's, I, I disagree. There's, there's not that many. The problem is there's so many groups. I mean, the Model Aeroplane Club of, mm. of Bromf, Bromfontein decides that they like a V because it looks like an old german bomber and they start putting v's on their back of their cars and then all the swingers start <laughs> eating them, so <laughs> this is the problem yeah you see it, it kind of reminds me of the tower of babel you know when everyone went off on a tangent in their own language their own gestures well this is kind of what mm -hmm. symbols in consensual non-monogamy feels like because it's just it's all over the place the other thing that's a symbol believe it or not is the anchor which represents like a proper anchor you know a marine anchor that they mm -hmm. in the boat. yes yes it's yes, like a ship's um, anchor yes yeah it represents stability and freedom in the swinging lifestyle but i mean i'm not trying to be funny when we do themed parties or themed dancing we wear symbols of say so if we were at a marine party that is what we sailors would be yes and now now i've got to be so careful because now what what am i saying if i'm Folk. now wearing an anchor now like what and an anklet and anchor by the way <laughs> yes and i love my anklet oh and by the way anchor you know in um Miladies at a point was it last year mm -hmm. when they had the whole sailor the blue and white the navy blue yes, and white. yes yes one yes of yes yes shirts the ladies t-shirts had a freaking anchor on so now why do I not wear that anymore holy shit you're saying asking. that Papa and Papa and olive oil could have been swingers his Papa also had like a big anchor on his form you know what I will ask him when I see him again. <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically, if I've got that teardrop necklace or the heart-shaped hot wife necklace, right? And I've got the anklet and I've got the sailor's outfit. Does that make me a full-blown swinger? <laughs> I mean, people are going to be approaching. I'm just <laughs> My friend, you are sending out such a strong signal. I think the aliens <laughs> will pick up on that one. <laughs> Open yeah. invitation. <laughs> what yes, other symbols do we have? We've got red beads or red bracelets. 
um, which mm-hmm. indicate that the swinger is open to meeting somebody new. So, oh. again, this is really problematic. Have you ever seen dancers? Have you ever seen, um, or even these fashionistas where they will wear the red bracelet or the red watch or something that goes with it? You know, mm. these wooden beads kind of thing. So, that the red, specifically the color red, um, indicates a swinger or someone open to new connections. So, now we're not wearing red beads anymore either. Okay. Or we are. Or we are. <laughs> Can you imagine going to a corporate event and you're kind of like doing the red and white thing and you've got the red and the next minute you're getting all these jobs and you're not sure why you haven't even presented yet. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Okay. But, okay, this is important. This is this is actually kind of important because obviously there's a lot of clubs and there's, there's a lot of parties. So things like this becomes prevalent and important for these clubs and parties to know about. Because when you've got an open party, say for instance, you've got an open house party and people are just rocking up, then instead of having to engage with people and ask them like, what is your deal? What is your preference? What are you doing here? What are you looking for? Then having something like that, and I know we use it in the BDSM world, right? If you've got a king party, Parties. Then, um, especially like the the staff would wear, like the red would wear, um, the there would, would be like a red armband that would indicate your medic, um, or your dungeon masters or whatever. So it's actually I, I found a couple of swingers parties that have been doing that, where you've got different kinds of bracelets, and that symbolises different kind of interests, so that you don't waste your time. And I mean, James, you and Debbie host a lot of parties. Am I right in ex- yes, saying correct, this? Yeah. So, how would you guys go about something like that if you had to host a party and tell everybody to bring beads? So, I mean, we we have hosted parties in the past. Um, I won't go into too much detail about which parties they were, but like you say, it's about saving time and it's about um, not wasting anybody else's time. So. For mm. argument's sake, at a, at a party, if there's, um, I, I know what, what's pretty fashionable at some of these parties is the glow in the dark um, bracelets that you you mm. break the you break the bead and then it glows in the dark. So there's different mm. uh, colours that are associated with different um, outlooks or different desires from that couple. So if a couple, for argument's sake, is interested in single females only. For that party, they will have a theme that if you're wearing a red bracelet, a glow in the dark red bracelet, you open to be approached by a single female. And if if they're wearing a blue one, mm. that means that they open to single single males. And it's essentially so, uh, from a distance, uh, a single male that's looking to to spend time with a couple, um, mm. just looks for the couple that are wearing a blue bracelet. They don't waste a their blue time bracelet, with a couple yeah. that's that's wearing a green bla- bracelet for argument's sake, and the green indicates that they're only interested in couples, and it's to make sure mm. that people don't don't approach people that don't want that attention. Yes, yes, I think that's important, right, Doctor M? Yes, yes, and they they you can also use the bracelets to indicate poly individuals that are only interested in poly relationships as well. So the colours oh. you mentioned are pretty similar to the colours that I researched where red is for single, blue is for couples, and green is for polys. Oh, wow, in the, in the look band. at that. In the wristbands. You see, I'm amongst experts here. I love it. I'm learning. So green, blue, and red. That's the colors I need to be aware of. I see my friend Weekwin says here, now I'm at a loss. A, a, a loss of various clothing and certain jewelry. That means I will just need to go naked from now on. <laughs> That's my kind of girl. <laughs> my kind of girl um so what james was saying nana about the brackets and that's also it's um it's a known symbol that you could put things between parentheses and that's also an indication that you're open to consensual non-monogamy uh depending on whatever Um. your uh, style or symbol or um sign is Okay, where they say that it's an indication of an open relationship or a non-monogamous relationship, and they use it in their their names on their profiles, for instance, um, uh, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, mm. whatever. So there's another thing. Now we're not using parentheses anymore. Now we just <laughs> use our names. <laughs> Or we are using parentheses, like James would say, right? (laughs) 
Oh, we are using it for the swingers out there. We need to use it. <laughs> so here's More another one. Did you guys... please. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you know that the infinity symbol is also a symbol that is used for by polyamorous people and by consensually non-monogamous people? The infinity symbol. And that's problematic for me because the infinity sign is very much within the um, esoteric. Intimacy lens. Yes. Yes. So now are we taking that out too? And that it's actually interesting if you think about it because the infinity means forever. It never ceases. Mm. Love never ceases. And apparently ceases. it means it does sex. One of, the, <laughs> one of the sex toy manufacturers, I don't want to promote openly on air, but it's an imported brand. I think it comes out of America. The name starts with an L. Uh, when you buy one of those toys, you actually get a little bracelet that's that's on the box that is also an infinity symbol. Um, and the bracelet probably fits around an ankle. So I've seen that before as well. Okay, well, that's sad that it has to be under those conditions because I think an infinity sign on an anklet is beautiful. I mean, it's such a powerful. Mm. But story. also, I mean, these are these are toys that that even monogamous people can be using, right? So right. that's that's not actually necessarily. It look the toy is supposed supposed to be there to promote your and, and enhance your intimacy. So I think that's actually a, a nice a nice gesture, because mm. it symbolizes that intimacy is never ending, and intimacy intimacy shouldn't be ever ending. Yes, but now, unfortunately, the, the infinity symbol and the anklet, whether you wear it on the left ankle or whether you wear it on the right ankle, it's or whether you fun. wear it on the rest, it's, it, it now in certain communities or certain um, clubs will have a specific meaning that um, equates it to consensual non-monogamy. So these poor people that are buying the toys should be very conscientious. Before they mm. start putting all this jewelry on, because they might just discover <laughs> things they didn't know existed. Mm. Yes. Oh, goodness gracious. Here we go. I know. So, as I was researching, another thing came out. You know, those, they call it the pompous grass. Those fluffy grass things. I saw, I saw some chatter on the, on the Podbean show just now. Um, also about the pompous grass. Yes, let's hear about the pompous grass. So years ago, I used to have many of these in big vases, the colored ones, in my house. Now, in, in my very rough old age, I'm discovering that this is an indication that you are consensually non-monogamous. So I apologize oh, to all cow. my guests that came <laughs> into my house in those years, you know, <laughs> very unwittingly put something there that shouldn't have been there. So, um, yes, it really, it, it speaks about the long relationship of swingers and it speaks about an indication to being open to alternative lifestyles, in particular, swinging. Wow. I bet you didn't know that one. That's no, I didn't. Probably something. Actually, okay. that's quite interesting. I didn't know that one. Yeah. I really didn't know that one. So the other one that seems to come up in various research articles that I looked up on was the black ring for men on their right hand. It almost uh -huh. looks like a black rubber band. That's an indication that the male is consensually non-monogamous. But now it brings me to another thing. There is quite a trend at the moment amongst the younger generation where they are um, not staying in gold and silver jewelry and that they are moving out into wood and the plastics and things like that. So now you've got the rubber band, which may, for someone, really just be an indication that they are betrothed or married. And now it's got an additional yes. meaning. Yes, because the, the youth are not really going for the gold and the silver like we used to 50 mm. years ago. They're, they're now being more conservative. And apparently, 50 years, you know, I wear white gold. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's also very interesting. It, to me, it's fascinating. Um, I'm not sure how these trends are meant to be 
implied, you know, are we married or are we consensually not monogamous? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they should just lick it and then we know you're married. Okay, there we go. There's no connotation to that. <laughs> and, and who's monitoring all these trains? I mean, hell with it. Sounds like this is coming this is exactly what I was thinking. People are going to get confused. This so, is exactly what I was saying when, when I was asking, like, why do we have to have so many? Why can't we just, everybody knows the upside down pineapple. Why can't we just stick to the pi upside down pineapple and there we go. Like, if you see a pineapple somewhere, imagine it's upside down and there you go. Also, if you see a pineapple in brackets, okay, or what's that other, what's the big word for it? Prolifium, what? Parentheses. Parentheses, okay. Let's, let's put a pineapple in parentheses and just imagine that that emoji means that you are now ethically non monogamous. It, it would I be think, nice. I, I think if you we, should start that. It would be nice if people just stuck to one thing, but they don't. The other thing that I found in the research was a silver or a gold S. If you wear it, you know, like most people wear their names or they wear their, their initials. So I'm very sorry to all the Susans and the San Maries and the Sammies and all of this, but seriously, don't wear your initials if you're not implying that that is means something. I don't it. <laughs> I mean, thank goodness I've got an owl. <laughs> When I read this, I was I was a little bit stunned. I was a little bit taken aback. Um, so mm. why not an M? Why not an L? Why not a P? Why just the S? Because it's swingers? it's for swingers, possibly. Exactly, but it's also for Susan and it's also for Samantha. <laughs> Do you understand? So um, sorry, Susan. Sorry, Samantha. <laughs> Sorry, Sarah. <laughs> there we go. There we go. There we go. Um, oh, this is hilarious. Uh, they also have, they're saying that the swinger symbol, which they now term as the swinger symbol, is two interconnected circles or a heart with an arrow through it. And this is normally displayed on profiles or web pages that are um, unique to swingers. I haven't, I actually haven't come across that, to be honest. Oh, no, they have. I, what I have seen, what I have seen, and I, I've, I found it in a lot of my research, it's going to be the round circle, and it almost looks like it, it's like a downward, a downward spike in the middle of the circle, a stripe, and then an upward stripe. So it's all, it looks like a, it looks like a swing inside a circle. I that's, the that's, I found. see Lola on camera now, right now. Showing us the symbol with her hands. Hilarious. <laughs> you look like you're doing the wild. You just thing love. Like... <laughs> Listen, you just love wagging me. I, mean, I don't know. I can't deal. <laughs> I'm going to get you back. I'll meet you, Mark. <laughs> uh, Listen, listeners, we need to go to a slight commercial break. But when we come back, a little bit more on signs, symbols, and secrets of swingers. And then, of course, James and I are going to talk about the terminologies a little bit. Okay, what is a hot mark? We, you guys have heard a lot about hot wife this and hot wife that and swingers this and swingers. What do all of these terminologies mean? What is a stag? What is a vixen? Let's talk about that when we come back from commercial break. Go and refill your water. I hope you guys aren't drinking during the week. Otherwise, I hope you guys have um a little bit of a break tomorrow if you don't don't be drinking yes yes okay brilliant love the lots of you we'll be back in the next 10 15 minutes in the comfort of your if you are looking to test for stis in the comfort of your own home look no further than famca our test kits provide you with results in 15 minutes go to www.famca.co.za for safe fast and discreet at home sti test kits Delivered in reverse. Wow. 
Jean-Marie van Groen, also known as Lola Blakely, and I'm thrilled to introduce to you Lotus Love, your ultimate destination in relationship, intimacy, and wellness coaching. As a wellness relationship and intimacy associated counselor, I'm passionate about helping individuals and couples navigate the complexities of modern relationships. Through personalized coaching sessions, I empower my clients to embrace love, intimacy, and connections in all its forms. Whether you're exploring ethical non-monogamy, navigating post-divorce life, or preparing for the dating scene, I'm here to support you. My coaching approach is holistic, compassionate, and tailored to your unique needs and goals. Together, we'll uncover your strengths, address the challenges, and create a path towards a more fulfilling and meaningful life. Ready to embark on a journey of self-discovery and transformation? Book a consultation with me today and let Lotus Love be your guide to fulfillment in relationship and life. Your path to a happier, healthier, more fulfilling life and relationship can start with me here today.
you are looking to test for STIs in the comfort of your own home, look no further than FAMCA. Our test kits provide you with results in 15 minutes. Go to www.famca.co.za for safe, fast and discreet at-home STI test kits. Oh man, oh man, that song gets me every damn time, every time, every time. What a song. Welcome back, Lustful listeners. You are listening to the fourth episode in season two of Lifestyle Lectures, your favorite nighttime talk focused on education and guidance in ethical non-monogamous, and the first half of this season is focused on y'all swingers. Yes, baby. This evening we are joined... By the infamous Dr. M, everybody knows Lola loves herself a little bit of Dr. M, yes. Dr. M, uh, Dr. Marina Vasson uh, obtained a PhD from NWU in sociology. Dr. M did a master's in medical sociology with a clinical in group dynamics and her bachelor's in forensic science. These are just a couple of Dr. M's qualifications. Dr. M's PhD was done on, was done on swinging and the effect of consensual non-monogamy on marital well-being and satisfactory. A satisfaction among South African couples. In conjunction to being an intimacy coach, Dr. M is also a Reiki master and, and a life coach. Dr. M is currently employed by UJ as a research associate. She's the director of Inspired Intimacy and is launching a comprehensive intimacy coaching syllabus in the next couple of weeks, which is approved by the ASC. ASC HP. That gets me every time. <laughs> Welcome back, James. Welcome back, Dr. M. Dr. M, can I ask you just yeah. to move your video slightly up so that we can actually see your face? Because the first half of the if oh. the first half of the <laughs> the first half of the show, I couldn't see James's face. I was just looking at his chest. <laughs> I can actually oh, see his face. But I... <laughs> Listen, I'm just thankful, James, that we don't have any um, technical difficulties this this evening because, I mean, you, know, you, you and I have just been... <laughs> you had to go and <laughs> Listen, listen, we're in the second half. It's gone off without a glitch so far. Also, I must say, I sent Podbean the nasty, nastiest email <laughs> and I was like, sort your shit out because oh, I God, need... Yeah. <laughs> Apparently it's Susan. No, I'm just saying, Susan. Because we're starting to wear S's. 
before the break, we were talking about signs and symbols in the swinging community, and we heard about the upside down pineapple, we heard about flamingos, we heard about the infinity sign, we heard about circles and swings inside them, fucking rubber bands, red bracelets, anklets, and so much more. I believe Dr. M still has one for us, and then she needs to love and leave us because she's got a, a huge program that she's working on. I mean, she's launching this um, inspired intimacy syllabus in the next couple of weeks, so she's working tirelessly. And then James and I will take over, and we're going to talk about terminologies a little bit. Yes, James, are you ready to do this with me? I am, but can you sit still because you're making me nauseous. You uh, but you know, time. I've got like ADHD. <laughs> Ever, do I ever sit still? You've known me long enough. <laughs> Dr. M's just laughing her ass off. She's like these two. <laughs> Fine, I'll sit still. I'll sit still. If I start shaking uncontrollably, it's going to be on you. Yes, yes. Dr. M, tell us about your last one. Um. <laughs> After you've laughed your ass off. <laughs> okay. So something I've encountered amongst bikers is a red bandana. A lot of them wear red bandanas, especially those with um, like Harleys and the, the more trikey kind of bikes. They've got their red bandanas mm -hmm. on. And I was more than amused to find out that a red bandana um, indicates a swinger or someone interested in non-monogamy. So I'm sure the whole Barker click is going to have some <laughs> something serious to say. But I was so amused. Mark, seriously. But it means they're not in a highly amorous uh, relationship. <laughs> I James, you didn't. I did. <laughs> I mean, James, you're an ex-biker, right? Did you ever wear a red bandana? I hope so, because you're also a biker and also a swinger. So no did that thing, should work for no you. such thing as an ex-biker, by the way, just for me clarify. You're a biker for life. And no, I never wore a red okay. bandana. Okay. Did you never wear a red bandana? Okay. Well, apparently, um, this is the thing. And I was just looking, like I'm saying, I really um, sort of resonate with the listener that said they're going to walk around naked uh, what are those black plastic bags unless some cult has a black plastic bag indicating <laughs> because um yeah it, it's very interesting let me tell you something as i was researching this i was more than pleasantly surprised to see how many different symbols how many different um colors ideas that people can come up with so all that i can say mm. is that everything it's subjective it's unique to the mm. culture to the country um to the swingers club possibly to to the swinger dynamics um because mm. nothing seems to be uh regulated so, this is such a, also the garden name. We mustn't forget. I see somebody somebody um, mentioned now the garden fucking name. <laughs> they, they do in their garden, but they also put the uh, pink flamingo in, um, in their yes. garden, standing on the one foot along with the little gnome, was also meant to. Um, I just, one of the listeners that happens to know me, just sent me a thing to say, well, hold on, here's a whole lot more for you to talk about. Oh my goodness, the star. The star. What? Like is a it singer symbol? The five pointed star. Well, this might not sit well with all the Christmas decorations. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm fucked. This is like all of my pendants. Okay, I've got an elephant on now. Please tell me there's nothing of an elephant okay, in here. Check on my, on my notes here. Elephant, elephant, elephant. <laughs> or a heifer lump. Yes. <laughs> if you're a poo fan like me. And oh, thank you to my listener. You know who you are. Oh, um, but thank you for the email. But now I'm not happy because now I have to read all my Christmas decorations. Christmas <laughs> 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 So when you're a yeah. researcher, just know that you are going to be flawed and scarred for life, especially when you research this stuff. 
Mm, of course. Dr. M, thank you so, so, so much for your time. I know you are extremely busy and I cannot, I cannot thank you enough for your absolute invaluable insights to this episode and to all of the, the um, episodes that you've been you, featuring Dr. on. We really appreciate and love you. Oh, thank you, Lola. Thank you, James. Thank you for having me. Thank you to all the listeners. And I hope you have seriously good evening when you've finished your podcast and catch up with you soon. Thanks for joining us. Yay. We love you. Bye. So, James, tell me, yes, Lola. what is a hot wife? Let's start with that. A hot wife. Well, with mm. the weather that very hard to find but in some... <laughs> um, so also it's not a wife that's going through menopause that has hot flushes let's just iron that out because i struggle with that one <laughs> very menopause no so yeah. any, any married woman that engages in activities with other gents that is not her husband can be defined broadly as a hot wife we had that, and I see her, she's online this evening. We had that episode with um, the psychotic hot wife, or the psychotic, uh, psychotic wife. I can't pronounce that still to this day. Um, when she joined us, um, Miss P, Mrs. P, she was the hot wife, and she explained that as well. But remember last season, I interviewed you and Mrs. Tusum, you and Debbie. And we had that extensive episode. I think it was the very first episode on lifestyle lectures last season. And we had had those terminology, that terminology discussion. Okay, I'll sit still I because I can see that. you glaring at me. <laughs> it's mesmerizing. Let me just put it that way. <laughs> oh, you're too sweet. So what other terminologies do you have for us, Mr. James? There's a lot of them, Lola. So, I mean, a lot of them, a lot of people know the, the backstory too, but I'll just go through some of them and we can discuss mm. one or two of them. So there's there's a term vanilla, which the mm. um, swingers use to define or describe a couple who is monogamous. Um, mm -hmm. in, within the lifestyle, we refer to um, monogamous couples as vanillas, people who live a vanilla life and don't have much insight into what happens in the minds and bedrooms of uh, swingers. Mm. Um, cuckold. Cuckold is another term mm. that, that comes up quite often. Um, usually a, a husband who um, his wife is um, open to the advances of other gentlemen and he gets pleasure, derives mm. a lot of pleasure from watching that. Sometimes there is a um, element of humiliation that, that goes with um, the cuckold scene. The, the mm. wife might um, antagonize him by uh, making him do some degrading things, um, licking her feet, or um, it, it depends on obviously what what, level what the kink are. is. Uh, yeah. Um, mm. There's cages involved where the, the husband might have to wear a cock cage where his, his cock is put inside this cage while it's still in a flaccid state. The cage is, is designed to be constrictive and mm. um, it can be locked or closed. And then while he's getting enjoyment from seeing her being pleasured by another, another gentleman, um, obviously he starts to get aroused and starts getting an erection and the, the cage cuts off circulation and makes it very discomforting and uncomfortable for him. Sure. But also, isn't there another term? Isn't that where, where yeah, swingers came me. from in the so, first place? No, you lost me. There we go. I haven't lost you. I can still hear you. Okay, there we go. So isn't, isn't, isn't there, uh, is it cuckold or cuckold or ca ca something like that? C-U-C-K-O-L-D. So, but isn't that where, where swingers are also derived from, from being a cuckolding no. couple? Wasn't that not not necessarily no? So uh, cuckold, as I said earlier, it's by by its broadest definition, a husband who gets who, who gets pleasure from watching his wife, and in, mm. in many instances, most instances, doesn't partake. He just watches. She mm. degrades him Sorry. to a to a lesser degree. Um, there's an element mm. of humiliation, and he gets to watch, but he doesn't get to touch. 
So I see Miss Bella Bells. Hello, Bells. Beautiful Bells. She thought I was, she she thought um I didn't love her anymore because I had her blocked on the podcast. Because the last time, remember, we had so many issues with her. <laughs> with her t- t- she had also technical difficulties. So now that, I, now, now that I've um so eloquently unblocked her, I see she says, what's the difference between a hot wife and a vixen then? Do we even know what the difference is? Do we even have enough time <laughs> to discuss this shit? I, I think a vixen, uh, difference between a hot wife and a vixen, I think by broader definitions, they're kind of the same thing. Mm. Uh, unless one of the listeners has got a, um, uh, one of the listeners has got a different angle on it. Mm. What other terminologies do you have there for us, Mr. James? Also, I, I got to let the listeners know that um, you did again just come home from work so you've had a very tough day and i'm kind of just putting us both on the spot here and we're just gonna wing it because yeah, that's, that's, that's what fine. we do I like, being, I like being put on the spot thank you lola <laughs> <Good time. laughs> yeah so so uh, yeah to, to to answer what um lovely bella was asking hey bells um yeah i think a vixen is the wife in a relationship where um, they invite a lot of partners in, uh, just my understanding mm. of it. Um, so she gets to spend a lot of time with guys that get invited um, by the couple to spend time with the couple, but more often than not, it's not a couple that um, plays with other couples too often or single guys too often mm. um, on a one-on-one basis. It's It's mm-hmm. her playing with a guy with the husband there without the humiliation yeah. aspect to it. Listen, you have made it through the last 10 minutes of being put on the spot by Lola. <laughs> You're a wait, superstar wait, 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 of a co-host. We've got more. We've got more. We've got more. How much more time? Do we <laughs> we've got more. <laughs> We're already over time, but let's go. Let's go for five minutes because I see Medusa is putting the time slots on you. She's like, guys, you're running out of it. Get done. <laughs> Let's so, hear a so couple. We, 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 we hosted a party a few, a few nights ago and we were chatting to some people and we were talking about um, straight and bar and hetero and um, how it works. If a couple says that um, the wife is bar from the waist up or... <laughs> that's a Bella saying. Straight from the waist down, yeah. So, I mean, that's a real thing in the lifestyle. Um, there's, there's terms like... Um, bar comfortable and hetero flexible, so mm-hmm. we, we we often talk about um, men or women that that um, define themselves as bar curious. So I mean mm. that that's always been been a, um, a a complex one for me to wrap my head around. I mean, if you once you've done it once, that, you're no longer curious. Yeah, if you're curious about whether you're going to like the taste of kiwi fruit, you try it once. You're no longer curious. You either like it or you don't like it. So you can only be bi curious once. Uh, mm. You know that's just that's just my take. So um, you bi curious. You have a bi experience. You enjoy it. You then are mm. either bisexual, in which case a lot of are, 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 are aimed at people of the same sex. Um, but heteroflexible is a, is a different term. To, to, to my understanding, heteroflexible, mm. if the chemistry is right on the night and you're playing with a couple um, and mm-hmm. you find the, the, the gentleman attractive and the gentleman finds you attractive and, you know, depending on whatever you've agreed to prior to the play date, if you want to suck his cock or if he wants to suck your cock or if you want to kiss him, then that works on the night. But it's not something that you actively mm. pursue and it's not something yes. you seek out. It's, it's not like you're going to marry, you're going to marry the yeah. same sex, yes. Yeah, it's you're comfortable in the moment on the night, depending on on how things are going down. I remember now that you mentioned by comfortable, that's a, that's something I learned from you as well as um, by receptive. Yes, because being by receptive, and this is something a lot of the ladies on the CIF realised the night we had that episode, is that they don't mind receiving from another lady. They, however, do have an issue giving yeah, to another lady. Correct. Yeah. So yeah, so obviously being bi would make you <clears throat> you would be comfortable with either dating and or sleeping with the same sex. Otherwise, you are going to be heteroflexible, which is going to make you comfortable 
to um, sleep with another sex, but not necessarily date the same sex. Correct. Um, yeah. What and then the receptive is, there, is just receiving. So it came up in conversation at the party as well, the word hall pass in, in the lifestyle. Hall pass mm. um, is something that we most of us remember from school days when you were out. I had to go uh, to pee. During, during class, you had, to, you had to go pee and the teacher gave you a hall pass. So singers yeah. also give each other hall passes. It's not, a, it's not a thing that all couples practice, but some couples do practice it where um, the husband might give the wife a hall pass and she then has uh, free reign and liberty to seek out a, a single guy or a couple and play mm. without him being there. Uh, and vice versa, mm. the, the husbands often get hall passes and they get to play with a, a single female or a couple or, or whoever um, um, without any any repercussions. It's it's like a free mm. pass to do what you want to. Obviously, terms and conditions apply depending on what the couple's into. Um, mm. the, the wife might want to know where he is, who he's with, when he's going to be home, that type of thing. But by broader definition, mm. he's, he's at liberty to do what he wants to do. He's allowed. Mm. He's got consent. He's got cons. Oh, listen to you using those big king words, right? Consent. I love that. <laughs> and and, and the, if time is short, the last one that I just wanted to touch on was um, taking one for the team, which is a term that comes up very often in the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Um, just with reference to the conversation that we had last Saturday with a couple where we were talking to a new couple and they were asking questions about, so what happens if we meet a couple and this is the wife talking, she says, and I find um, the husband of the other couple attractive, attractive but my husband mm. doesn't find the wife very attractive, you know, and they come on to us and, um, you know, we end up going to a private room or going back home or whatever the case may be. And, you know, then he's unhappy about the, this encounter because he really wasn't into the wife. And we explained to them mm. that by, by definition that would be taking one for the team. So the wife mm. is, 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 is hooking up with a husband of the other couple that she finds attractive. And the poor old husband is now stuck with the wife of the other couple and he, there's just no sexual chemistry. So essentially he's taken one for the team. Um, and we advocated against it. I mean, it causes all types of resentment issues and mm. can lead to arguments that didn't need to be there if um, a couple can establish some type of, of, of policy and framework at the outset where mm. if they're both not into the, the other couple, then they, you know, when in doubt, opt out. So taking... When in doubt, opt out. Yeah. I love that. That's also something else I learned from you and, and um, Debbie. When in doubt, opt out. Thank you, James, for allowing me to put you on the spot this evening. You've been a brilliant, a brilliant sport, by the way, a brilliant co-host this evening. Without any technical difficulties, I might say it. I'm really proud. I was going to say, now that my microphone is working properly and there's no delay, <laughs> okay. makes it a lot easier. Thank you. Listen, I love you. You know this. Yes, yes. <laughs> Listen, last for listeners. This evening you were listening to um, Signs, Symbols and Secrets of Swingers. So what we're going to do, right, in Lifestyle Lectureship, Lifestyle Lectureship is actually running for 20 weeks straight. Yes, I know I'm fucking crazy. We know it. We love it. It is what it is. It's not stopping. So um, the first half, the first 10 episodes are going to be on swingers, okay? Um, essentially, the whole show is focused on ethical non-monogamy. But the first 10 episodes is focused on swingers. The last 10 episodes, KB is going to be joining Lola, and we are going to be talking about your poly people, Lola's favorite poly people, yes. What can you lustful listeners expect on the Lola Blakely production going forward for the rest of the week? On Friday night, don't miss myself and Miss Calms, my favorite as well, if you might say, oh shit, I've got Medusa on there, she's going to kill me now. <laughs> With my two favorite wifeies, Miss Common and Miss Medusa, um, <coughs> pardon me. On Friday night, we are doing the Erotic Evolution. The Erotic Evolution is going to be featuring Jerry, an established author. 
and that's 9 p.m. Friday night. Don't miss it. It's going to be amazing. On Saturday night, we're doing kinky classes, and myself and um, Red or Baronista are going to be talking to, dum dum dum, you guys see her online, Queen Ananas. Queen Ananas is joining us for um, kitting out for classy kink kitting out your classy kink kit so this is going to be the toy box episode what do you need in your toy box what the hell is a bear claw come find out saturday night 9 p.m on um kinky classes next week on lola's lifestyle lectures we're going to be joined by miss to miss mrs Tusim, debbie and her and i are going to be doing from basic to blue ribbon bull a guide for the solo male lifestyle. This is going to be interesting. And it's myself and Debbie. Ah, it's going to be a skull. <laughs> Listen, I'm already, I'm, I'm, I'm already excited for that one. No, oh, really. Are you going to be listening? <laughs> Let's get ourselves a sexy bull there that we can be discussing this shit with. Yes? Yes. <laughs> and that's it from this from the production too late i heard that <laughs> says medusa oh shit i'm in trouble now <laughs> that's it from this evening yeah <laughs> that's it from this evening's production team thank you mods thank you medusa thank you james ever so charming we've had a great time we'll see you again next week same time same place until then stay lustful listeners if you are looking to test for STIs in the comfort of your own home, look no further than FAMCA. Our test kits provide you with results in 15 minutes. Go to www.famca.co.za for safe, fast and discreet at home STI test kits.